Hello everyone, my name is Sheetal Pataria. Today we will discuss a small topic on cash flow analysis from Wealth Management Unit 1. So basically, all of us already know that what is cash flow. Cash flow in simple terms, if we want to talk about that, there are many activities, n number of activities taking place in our business. And to keep a record of those business, because so many transactions are happening, it is not possible for a single person to remember all such things. So for that purpose, we do what? Recording of accounts. In that, when we talk about cash flow analysis, only a statement is made where the activities which are related only with cash, that is money, are being recorded. Those statements we call it as cash flow statement. Now, why this cash flow analysis is important? First of all, it is important because it will let us know what is the health of the firm? How, what is the position of the firm? It will let us know current cash position of the firm. It will let us know the liquidity status of the firm. Along with that, this particular technique is very essential and it is used by investors and businessmen to determine what is the actual value of the firm okay now let us talk about certain advantages what are the advantages of cash flow analysis now the two points which we have already covered we can take those particular points in advantages as well along with that if we want we could add more points like it is going to show us liquidity status which means the actual cash the company has we are going to come to know from this particular statement along with that uh, liquidity status that is liquidity position also is going to help us that whether any particular shortcoming is happening any particular shortcomings in the sense for example suddenly covid hit what happened many business got shut down so if any particular shortcoming is happening so once we know what is the actual monetary or cash situation money cash money is with firm then we can you know complete those shortcomings we can fulfill those shortcomings then the next one we can talk about related with any disparencies what is disparency it means if any default has occurred in our cash flow statements or any particular transaction which is related with cash with the help of cash flow statements we can come to know and we can solve we can identify those gogs those defaults and you know resolve those particular issues then the next one we could talk about is cash is the basis of all the financial operations so it is very very essential commodity so we can say that projected cash flow is also going to show the transparency of the firm from the cash flow analysis statement we can come to know the transparency now this transparency is very essential for whom for all those stakeholders who are interested to invest in our business or who are directly or indirectly related with the working of our company now who are my the stakeholders my stakeholders are government my stakeholders are shareholders my stakeholders are customers even banks when they need to give the loan they need to know that actually what this particular position of the company how much money or cash those people have the next is we would be seeing the classification of cash flow analysis in which way we are going to classify this particular analysis classification of cash flow activities now when we need to classify my our cash flow activities are classified into three categories the first one is operating activity the second one is investing activity and the last one is financing activity now when we talk about operating activity operating activities are those activities which are primary activities or of our business so if we want we can consider them as an main or primary activities for example if there is a manufacturing company who produces clothes so their main activity would be what to collect the raw materials threads and to produce a cloth so their main activity is this so any money which is coming in or going out while 
doing this particular activities that is procurement of raw materials or in cash but in cash all the expenses which we are spending on producing or manufacturing of goods but related with cash all those activities are going to come under our operating activities now these activities are also divided into two we are learning cash flow we know cash kya ho raha hai aa raha hai aur ja raha hai simple so we would divide it into cash inflow and cash outflow so which type of activities are going to uh, we going to consider or we going to put it here now generally all the receipt of goods and services which we sold when we sell something in exchange we receive what money so if we receive cash cash no credit only cash if we received cash on the selling of goods or services goods or commodities so here we would be keeping this under this particular category apart from that what are the outflows activity outflows activity would be the payments which we made the payments which we made on goods and services which we sold out so cash or we could say payments on goods or services or commodities but in terms of cash if payments on raw materials our goods here would be what raw material right so payment we made on raw materials we uh, for bringing our raw materials into our go down or storage so we paid certain amount of cash to the truck driver so the activity is related to what why we are bringing that we are bringing the raw material for producing goods right so those particular activity we will record the transaction in cash outflow that we had made the payment in cash the second inflow on operating activities we could get the money on royalties theek hai sometimes we can also add on commissions so what is royalty royalties are basically the amount which we get on certain commodity that we have or uh, for example if there is a patent and if there is a patent right the person has sold certain patent to somebody else and on that we are utilizing their patents and we are manufacturing our certain goods so we are going to pay them what royalty so basically all such things come under royalties then and commission and other revenue which we are paying but those all revenue are related with operating exp uh, operating activities now here i am going to give you one uh, question the question is where all those activity whether they are related with cash or they are related with credit where we put all those activities if we are preparing trading pnl or balance sheet account we put all those particular activity mostly in trading account if we receive cash then we put those particular items in the credit side of trading if we pay out something then we put those particular items on the debit side clear the next one is investing activity now what are my investing activity here again investing we are going to divide into two categories cash inflow and cash outflow basically my investing activities are all those activities which we are doing for example there is a company a now the company a has purchased shares of uh, y limited purchase 5 lakh shares of y limited so those particular money which i am investing is going to consider as an part of an investment activity now here also we need to keep one thing in mind that all the transactions which we are doing they are in the form of cash only along with that more investment activities we could say that we are utilizing a uh, huge amount of money to purchase some assets now my assets could be they could be machinery which i am utilizing then it could be land furniture land building so all those particular asset on which i am purchasing those all are going to come under what investment activity now here the cash flow from investment activities include the moment of cash flow owning to the purchase and sales of assets owning to this purchase and sales of asset so mostly if i want to talk about i can say that mostly asset related activities are coming under this particular 
active this particular classification okay so when we talk about inflow so what all inflow i am going to get i am going to get the cash receipt deposible on fixed asset including intangible so any receipt i am utilizing or i am getting from disposal of fixed asset hai na scrap hai scrap ko bech diya to scrap ka money aaya है ना स्क्रैप हमारा कहाँ से था असेट ही था असेट स्क्रैप में कन्वर्ट हो गया उसे हमने बेच दिया तो कहाँ पे आएगा अगर कैश में आया है मनी तो कैश एंड फ्लो क्लियर देन द नेक्स्ट वन कुड बी रिसिप्ट फॉर रीपेमेंट्स ऑफ एडवांस एनीथिंग व्हिच वी हैव रीपेड इन एडवांस एंड दैट मनी वी आर गेटिंग बैट अलॉन्ग विद दैट वी कैन टॉक अबाउट डिविडेंट रिसीव्ड डिविडेंट और interest we had given loan to somebody else and now we have received interest amount received so this particular items are going to come under cash inflow receipt now what is cash outflow uh, basically the money which we are spending on acquiring assets now this assets could be tangible intangible also sometimes when we are investing a large amount of money for research and development that also comes in this particular category apart from this if we are doing certain payments to acquire shares right shares of some another company to purchase certain warrants government securities or debenture instruments all the activities all the investment activities which we are doing on the basis of cash are going to come under this particular category so we need if we are acquiring shares debentures etc then again sometimes if we are making an cash advance payment to the third party cash advance payment but we need to keep in mind that those advance payments are not coming in financial activities those are different now our third one and the last one is financial activities now this financial activities are mostly those activities which are related to long term funds or capital of an enterprise now this activities mostly include long term fund and long term capital activities in an enterprise now financial activities are those activity that result in the changes in the size and composition of the owners capital and the borrowing of an enterprise so mostly if we see in balance sheet on the liability sides when we have the segregation na, of capital reserves and surplus then again in capital we have a different so all those particular items and things which are coming under those particular category how the composition is being done we are all those activities come under financing activities for example cash proceed from the issue of equity shares or debentures raising long term loans repayment to the bank loan etc all those activities which we do they come under financing activities okay now again similarly if we talk about then this activities are also divided into two categories our cash inflow and cash outflow so what are the activities here how money is going to come from financing activity we are having an organization we are issuing shares so this is the major very good technique and very essential technique to raise the money from public that is to issue equity shares or preference shares so issue of shares but that issue i am going to get in cash so cash proceeds cash proceeds from issuing of shares shares or debentures even shares debentures now see basically we can divide this particular cash inflow into two categories first one is own fund second could be yes borrowed fund so our cash proceed from shares are basically own fund second one we receive cash that is cash proceed from debentures loans or bonds or we have issued some other types of securities which people could buy and on that we are paying them interest also so cash proceeds from debentures and the last one cash outflow now cash outflow in financial activities this is generally we are doing the repayments repayments we could say that we have taken a loan from the bank then we are paying them the interest okay or paying the borrowed amount so we could say the interest paid on loans 
now or we could say the cash repayments on loan so the amount which we are paying on the loan all those activities are going to come under cash outflow i hope operating investing and finance these three activities are clear thank you